We're back to wrap up our Michael Bay. He's made a bunch of Transformers movies. Uh, Caravan of Cabbage <laughs> special edition episodes that we've been doing. We did it, James. Not I mean, yet. I was going to say, this is yeah. the start of the episode. We might still crack by the end of this. <laughs> if this never comes out, people will know. But you know what would get us through? Yes. A like, obviously. That gives us that oh, little that bit gives of us the strength to push yeah. through. We're just imagining those likes coming at us. Yeah. Just like shrapnel. <laughs> That's right. You know, just like stray bullets. Which might be the name of some of the Decepticons. Shrapnel and stray bullets. Oh, who's your favourite? Who's your, Of this movie, who's your favourite new Transformer? Mine's Nitro Zeus. <laughs> Mine's the one who goes, gah, 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 gah. Oh, yeah, gah, 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 gah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that might be the same guy. You, no, you're thinking of Lady Gaga Gaga Gaga. Okay, yeah. right. So it's been 147 hours of these movies. It really has, hasn't well, it? Where, where are you at this point? Shattered. <laughs> Shattered as a human being. <laughs> this one gives us a little variety for a very specific reason. Now, James, I don't, I don't have a lot of faith in the world, James, but here's one thing that I believe wholeheartedly with my entire body and soul. I could start a cult based on this. Okay. It's that the original script for this movie was a fantasy movie. It had nothing to do with Transformers at all. Mm. And then they were added after the fact. Like I, an Arthurian legend? Yes. Turn modern day? I know this because if you take all the Transformers and all the transforming out of this movie, and there's not a lot of transforming to Ooh. take out, it's still a full movie. <laughs> not only that, it's specifically, it's a movie about a young woman who doesn't believe in the mythical history of England, who discovers that she is the descendant of Merlin and is therefore the only person who is capable of finding and wielding a magical staff that summons a dragon that saves the earth from monsters from another world. Like it's a shorter movie and it's a better movie. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a shorter movie. I'll, a, yeah. I'll, I'll go with you on that. You might say this movie was produced in an era where Michael Bay had put together that kind of genius scriptwriter, whiz kid think tank specifically this for putting together for yeah. Transformers movies. But I think what happened is one day, like one Friday afternoon, Michael Bay was like, good hustle, everybody. All right, I'll see you back here on Monday with your completed Transformers 5 scripts. And one dude's like, oh, no, I've just been sitting up the back not doing anything. <laughs> and he just gets out his laptop and he's just got like a script, his passion project. And yeah. it's this fantasy movie about... It's a Michael. sequel to Guy Ritchie's King Arthur. Exactly, that's right. <laughs> back in the habit <laughs> and he just goes through it and he just starts adding Transformers stuff yeah. he's like okay we're in a car chase let's just say some of them are Transformers yeah. we'll put them in a submarine let's say the submarine's a Transformer let's say the dragon's a Transformer who cares at this point just put it in what's going on with that dragon can you explain that to me because the dragons look, can, can look, make their own decisions right but uh, they're controlled by the staff but they're controlled by the staff well, that's the thing. but they have to give you the staff I'm saying that in the original version then it's not. It's just like a monster. Yeah, right. And the staff controls it. But okay. if you add Transformers to it, who are sentient beings, who yeah. don't need to be controlled, you could just ask them to be nice and save the world. Yes. But they didn't take it out. See, that's okay. the thing. I think there's definitely some validity to that thinking. I think so. And this was the biggest budget one at this point in time. It was $217 million, but it also made the lowest amount of money at Pe $605 million. People were tiring of these movies. That's right. It was considered a box office failure because it lost like $100 million. But the thing is, like you mentioned, they're spending money on the wrong things. Mm. There's amazing giant sets and structures and underwater traversal and they recreate Stonehenge so they can, <laughs> so right, they can yeah. explode stuff around it. There's a medieval battle sequence, but it's like you're looking at the wrong thing. Yeah. Why doesn't Optimus Prime transform in this movie at least once? Well, he, maybe he does behind some dust and dirt and smoke, <laughs> but we don't see it, do we? And it starts again with that thing of like... You know history. You, you thought history, <laughs> right? But yeah. Transformers, maybe. Yeah, some right. Of it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we know they've been here. But they're in things. They're in everything. Apparently, <laughs> they killed Hitler. Maybe they were Hitler. <laughs> I mean, there's some, again, there's interesting sequences. The battle sequence at the start, the medieval battle sequence, looks great. Yeah. The bit where Bumblebee is in World War Two, that looks great. Yep. But I mean, they they belong in maybe a TV series of this, like yeah. to, to cram it all into one movie. Well, it's funny you should mention that because I do have a bit of trivia, which I was going to say for later for our famous trivia section trivia all the time we won't stop after the release of age of extinction a writer's room was set up to plan a possible cinematic universe for the mm. mainline films two of the ideas pitched involved an arthurian myth and one set in world war ii executive producer and director michael bay liked them so much that he decided to incorporate them into the script for this movie just smash just it put them on, just take ideas that could be good ideas on their own and yeah, yeah. just jam them into just, this just, one i mean we had some characters that people didn't like in the previous movie but michael 
Marvel based friends with Mark Wahlberg, so just put him in the starting. You could take the whole sequence at the start out. Mark Wahlberg doesn't need to be in this. There are a couple of new supporting characters, his new couple of best friends. They don't yeah, need to be in this. Because he melted the last one or whatever. It's absolutely, and he nearly melts this one. But I mean, you could just take that out. Mark Wahlberg's character, Cade Yeager, the great Cade Yeager, he's not necessary for this story at all. No. The only reason he's in this is that he gets a medallion talisman thing and it gets stuck on him. Yes. And then he goes through this movie rousing and complaining and yelling at people and fighting robots until the end when the talisman turns into a sword and he blocks an attack with it. Yeah. And that's it. That's right. That's all he does in this. Yes. It's again that thing of she's got a destiny because she's Merlin's ancestor or descendant mm -hmm. and he's got a destiny because he's a knight. It's like, do you need both of them to have a different medieval destiny? You don't. Yeah. You don't. You also, because when that knight meets him on the ship and the knight's like, you're a good man, Cade Yeager, it gives him the medallion and they run through later like the, the things that a knight needs to have, how they're brave and they're beautiful and they're, <laughs> they've got wonderful biceps <laughs> and one of them is that they're chased and he's like, I haven't had sex in a long time or whatever. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know that Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But does that mean that that particular Transformer can tell when a person has had sex last? Is that how that works? What if some horrible incel stumbled across it? He turns it into some sort of strange gynecological device. That's his, <laughs> that's his alt mode. The other thing about this movie is it's just like Unicron. Yep. Unicron? I mean, I know also in Transformers Prime, the animated series, the Earth uh -huh. is Unicron. But if you're going to put Unicron in it, I feel... It has to turn into a, a giant man. Right, exactly. A giant golden demon man. Why not? <laughs> I just... Ridiculous. Oh, a couple of horns. Who cares? Nobody. Nobody cares. And then they're like, Cybertron's coming to Earth to drain the Earth. And Optimus Prime's like, what have you done to my world? Your world? You shoved it through a portal like two movies ago, remember? Right? Yeah. It's already, it already came to Earth. It's literally happened two right? movies ago. Jesus. Like, yeah. they, they don't even remember the things that they're recycling. There's a moment where Steve Buscemi, the robot's like, this is Starscream's head. The head exploded. I saw that happen right? two movies ago. Yeah, yeah. They don't remember anything. There's no continuity in this. How can you establish this cinematic universe? None of this clicks together. No, absolutely not, no. <sighs> anyway, thank God for Cade Yeager. I agree. And thank God for Vivian Wembley. But what an awful pairing, quite well, frankly. The worst pairing, absolutely. They've got to go on a, uh, a fun... Sexually charged journey across mm. England. I've written here, uh, Laura Haddock, who's actually Peter Quill's mum in Guardians of the Galaxy. That's right. She has more chemistry with Kurt Russell, a man double her age with a CGI face whose character intentionally put a tumour in her head. I believe <laughs> that those, those two, yep. that, that relationship is beyond horrible is a better relationship than what we're getting here. Yeah, you here. can see how they got together. Like, yeah. you go, okay, well, they've got charisma and, and he's, uh, Ego's a freewheeling travelling man, I guess. You see him just driving along in that convertible being like, yeah. Yeah, and that's cool. Yeah, but yeah. there's moments where she's like, oh, who are you, American man? Where are you from? And he's like, I'm an inventor. And she's like, what did you invent? And he's like, things that you've heard of. Why would you say something so obvious and easily disproved? Because all she has to obviously say next is, name a, th a thing. Yeah. His ego is so rampant yes. that he can't even just go, oh, actually, I repair and find Transformers. That's pretty good. It's good enough, actually. Right? Look, what I did invent is I invented in the last movie, I invented a, a robot that sort of fetches you beer. <laughs> but in this, I don't need it because there's little Transformers that get beer for me, so I've kind of given up. <laughs> you know what I liked about this movie is that we, we discover... That uh, again, speaking of recurring characters, yeah. Uh, well, look, Bumblebee's back, uh, and he can break up into pieces and still fight. I mm. guess because that happened in Iron Man three. That did happen in Iron Man three. So I 3. guess Bay was like, put that in. Why not? I've got a list of things that I think this movie. Oh, okay. Well, we'll talk yeah. about that. So as far as my list goes, the scavenger character who lives on her own in the junkyard—that's clearly Ray from Star Wars. She's even got a little BB eight. You know oh, that's I mean? true, yeah, it didn't even occur to me. To this movie's credit, it's less lecherous with young women than the previous ones have been. Mm -hmm. I mean, just. Right, sure. <laughs> it doesn't overtly sexualise... There's as still some weird references, though. Oh, yeah. At one point, Wahlberg's like, hey, what are you doing? You're wearing a stripper dress? She's just wearing a dress. Yeah. But the difference in this one is why I say it's slightly less is she's like 32. And th oh, that's course, the yeah. difference. Right, not, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not much better, uh -huh. but that's the difference. So there's a Gladiator-esque opening battle sequence, which, by the way, you can just take all that out. You I'm don't need that. That's what I'm that. saying, yeah. yeah. It's obviously Suicide Squad with the introduction of Nitro Zeus and Teeth Chatter McGee or whatever we talked about. Mm -hmm. There's also Good Guy v. Good Guy, which Fast and Furious were doing at the time, and Captain America Civil War and Batman v. Superman. And I know films obviously borrow from other films all the time. Film and entertainment, pop culture in general, everything is built off the back of something else. It's a real melting pot it out is, there. But it's so blatant in this and not done well that it's it feels really egregious. Anyway, Megatron's back, I guess. Is he the main bad guy? Maybe. <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> 
No, no, it's the lady robot who's in it, you know, yeah. once every hour. Yes, that's she's, right. She's in it. Yeah, she's once every hour, the same as Optimus Prime. <laughs> Why isn't he in these movies? I, I know, I feel like I've said this every video. How, how much is he in this? Once again in this movie, Optimus Prime repeatedly busts out his famous catchphrase, I'll kill you. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm starting to wonder if Peter Cullen, voice of Optimus Prime, he was asked to do that many movies ago and they were like, hmm, not quite good enough. Can you give us another take? And he ran it through like 10, 20, 30 oh, times yeah. and they're just putting in alternate takes you might be constantly. Because right. why else would he be always saying yeah. that? It's mean and rude. <laughs> quite frankly, it is. This movie was kind of sold on Bumblebee versus Optimus, like you've never seen or whatever. <laughs> They've also used all the tricks at this point, so I think that's why this one also didn't do as well. And also it didn't pander to the Chinese market like the previous one did, which probably accounts for box office. And then, of course, this is the bit that annoys me most about in terms of continuity. When Bumblebee... You know, finishes fighting Optimus Prime and they're like, we've had enough of a fight. Uh -huh. Yes, That's enough fighting for the trailer. We can stop now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Pretty much, yeah. He's like, Optimus, I'm your best friend. And Optimus is like, I haven't heard your voice since we were back on Cybertron. First movie! Mm -hmm. Remember the first yeah. movie? I wish to stay with the boy, <laughs> yeah. is what he said. Yeah. yeah. Is it a different Optimus Prime every movie? Is I that know. why he doesn't remember anything? Is he getting his mind wiped like the Winter Soldier so he's insane? Oh, maybe he has like a loose battery pack wire or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> it getting... comes loose and then he's like, and he, yeah, maybe, maybe. It's and then when he comes to, he's like, I'll kill you. <laughs> That's right. Oh. You know what else I'm sick of in these movies? What's that? Human characters, the main human characters, I should say, not getting smashed by robots by pure happenstance. Mm. Just wherever they're rolling, like a big fist or a foot just lands near them. They're in a transformer. The transformer transforms into a robot. They're flung into the air yep. and like go over an overpass or under an underpass and then they're caught. <laughs> by giant steel hands at the speed of a car <laughs> and they're just not smashed into paste. You're right. <laughs> I just, I, I'm sick of it. But to be fair in this movie, when uh, Tad Hamilton showed up, part of me was like, oh, a, an adult. Yeah. Like part <laughs> yeah, of me yeah. was like, thank God Josh Demel's here. Like, it's got so like, great at the temples. Yeah. He's got wisdom. This is a, this is a this fucking shit show, this, this whole <laughs> thing. Thank God. If, Somebody if, who remembers the first movie yeah. is here. <laughs> Everybody like shut him. up and I'll de well, deal with this. Just <laughs> cool out. So how do you feel about Bumblebee's speech patterns in these movies Well, now? at this point, we didn't mention it last week, but I mean, at least one movie ago, he stopped speaking in meaningful songs from the radio. Yeah. And he just started speaking in movie quotes and like Def Jam comedy recordings yeah. and stuff like that. At one point, quite early on, he plays a clip, which I assume is from an old Western or something like that. And the line is, I'll burn you so bad you'll wish you died as a child. <laughs> Which, when you watch it, the movies, they, like this sort of stuff, like a lot of his stuff, is, a lot of a lot of his dialogue is kind of hard to pass when you're in a movie yeah. theater or something like that. But when you watch it at home on TV, I'm like, what did he say? And I went back, and I'm like, I'll burn you so bad you'll wish you died as a child. That's that's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing to say. Yeah, awful. <laughs> I also think this movie is the one that Michael Bay realised in a PG movie you could say shit as many times as you want. Yeah, right. It's a shit of palooza, mate. Oh, yeah. Ben's going to put in a, a, comp a compilation. The man who edits these videos. Shit, shitty ass day. I've been shit. It's whole shit. Shit's getting out of control. Not the shit, Cade. Got him some shit. Huh? Made that shit up. I'll do this shit for money. You don't do this shit for the money. What? Big shit. That pounds of shit. Dark shit. Bullshit. Shit. You know, shit. Scary shit. Shit. Kamikaze. Shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. 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 Holy shit. No shit. Shit. Shit list. Shit. Holy shit. All this shit. Shit. That was bullshit. Which, by the way, he has to watch these more times than we do. I've apologised him <laughs> to him via via Twitter message a number of times, and he's like, "No, I like quite like rewatching these." And I'm like, "Do you? If that's what you want to believe." He's actually got a video coming up on these very movies about a thing that he particularly enjoys. Oh, terrific. So, yeah, it's, it's, I'm excited. Look forward to that. One of my notes here just says that submarine is a trampoline, I guess. And because I think my computer auto-corrected to trampoline. But it may as well be a trampoline. Sure, yeah. Because they're just like, did you know this is a transformer? Is it? Yep. Is it? Yeah. Is it? <laughs> a lot, there's a lot of vehicles and characters and objects in this movie that are they transform? Apparently, Sir Anthony Hopkins' walking stick, like it transforms into a gun. So is it a transformer that hasn't spoken <laughs> For decades? <laughs> or is it just a transforming... Is it made of transformium? It's hard to... His companion is Cogman. Yes. Who... I quite I, like Cogman. You, of course, because he's a weird <laughs> metal psychopath. Yes. I, again, I think in the original script, he was probably like a medieval 
suit of armor. Yeah, right. It was possessed by the spirit of Galahad or something. Yeah. Let's say Galahad. Let's say Galahad. Yeah, why yeah. not? But now um, they're just like, what if C-3PO was a psychopath? Right. Which, by the way, they've already done in comics. And allegedly in this movie, he's a headmaster, which means Ugh. in the context of Transformers, he would transform into the head of a larger Transformer, yes. which would then transform into a vehicle. A toy was released. Yeah, but we never saw the we never no. saw it actually happen in the movie. He's just driving a regular car. <laughs> There's a lot of driving a regular car in this, Again, isn't it's there? just it's just regular car chase, and they were like, well, let's say one's a, that one's an Autobot, hey? Let's say... Let's say that. Why not, you know? Yeah. At one point, Cogman and Anthony Hopkins, mm. they jump from their normal car to a decoy car, and Anthony Hopkins says, oh, Cogman, you've parked the decoy car a long way away, and it's like in the middle of the street with both its doors open. <laughs> and I'm like... That's the Cogman I know, though. What, so what did, what did you do, Cogman? Did you, did you drive... A car out to the middle of London in the middle of the night so no one could see you're a robot man and then just <laughs> left it there till daytime with the doors open? What, how did nobody steal it? I, I don't know. Did he park it there? Is it a Transformer? Maybe it's a Transformer. You, might, you right. might have called it. I don't know. <laughs> I like the way you told off Cogman like he worked for you then. You're like, what did you do, Cogman? Cogman? What have you done? But then what I'm are like, you up to this but time, then I'm Cogman? Like, I can't stay mad at you, Cogman. I really like the design of Cogman. Like that clockwork mm. man thing. He would be better in a non-Transformers movie. Yeah. Cogman Begins, maybe. <laughs> yes. Look, here's some stuff that I enjoyed in this movie. I really enjoyed the scene in which Kay Diego and Vivian Wembley go to her palatial castle estate and have to look for the, the clue that her father left her in order to uh, mm. in order to find the, the last night and the Merlin and the staff and the blah 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 But I also like the idea that that's how Michael Bay thinks academic research is performed. <laughs> it's like, you know, when, when Homer thinks the opera is <laughs> like a bear driving a little car, Michael Bay thinks that academic research is you just open drawers and empty them on the ground and <laughs> smash things until an answer is presented to you. Yeah, it's the Indiana Jones school of archaeology. Speaking of, I also enjoyed the part, they end up at the, the secret underground underwater spaceship where Merlin has, has been entombed, and they open up his tomb and they're like, oh, we were looking for a Transformers staff and he's just a regular staff. <laughs> we're so mad. He flips out, he's like, how can this be? So What are we even doing? Like, he loses it. <laughs> calm down, Mark Wahlberg, for a second. Mark Wahlberg, calm down for a sec, take a breath. Remember, you're in a world of Transformers, you're in a Transformer spaceship, you're looking for a Transformers artifact. Consider for a moment, you might have transformed into something else, <laughs> like a stick. Or something else. We okay, buddy? All right, all right. <laughs> Yeah, he's a I mean, he's a moron. He's a know, moron, right? yeah, right. Uh, look, I've got a note here. It says Megatron refers to Starscream as his old treacherous friend. Yeah, yeah. He's treacherous in the cartoons. He's very loyal in the movies. <laughs> yes, that's true, yeah. So it's trivia time, Mason. I'm ready. Hot trivia. Uh, actually, one trivia, because we've said other trivias already. Okay, well, one I'm... One trivia I'm, time. Well, one trivia time. Well, I have. I also have maybe one more trivia. Two trivia time, everyone. No, no, it's one trivia time. We're going to do, do it separately. Okay, good. We're going to have the graphic twice. <laughs> Hot Rod, who's in this movie, by the way. Yep. Hot Rod's French accent accent was executive producer and director Michael Bay's idea as he thought it would give Hot Rod a unique character. Or, you know, give him like a personality or a motivation or like... He has a French gun. is not a personality! No, James. He has a gun that slows down time. That's his oh, personality. Yeah. Where's that technology been? Right? <laughs> Why is he the only one that has it? <laughs> well, again, it's like Optimus Prime being able to fly for no reason. Yeah. All right, uh, and also... It... Second trivia. Different section, though. One trivia time. Here's one trivia time. Uh, throughout the course of the movie, Bumblebee's doors sometimes open like a regular car door, and sometimes they open up like upwards, like a fancy Lamborghini or something sure. like that. And some might say, well, that's probably a production error. You know, they've got a couple of different versions of the car. But I say... Uh, that's Bumblebee just trying to squeeze some enjoyment out of his life by annoying all of his passengers. Because <laughs> every time he'd get in and when you'd be like, okay, time to get out of this car. Get you, get you. Bumblebee, <laughs> god damn it. Oh, yeah. I can't stay mad at you. Yeah. Oh, wait, yes, I can, because that died as a child line from earlier. <laughs> really offensive, man. I'm still mad about it. Also, you don't get this effect as much watching it at home. But the aspect ratio on this is a nightmare. I don't know what version you watched, but it jumps shot to shot oh. between IMAX and... And regulo, uh -huh. <laughs> and it's 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 headache inducing. Oh no, it's way worse in the cinema. But it's like, pick one, pick like you know when Christopher yeah, Nolan right. does it, he will do like this section is in IMAX. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like it's not between shots, just interiors in an office. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure, right. Uh -huh. Ugh. Good stuff. Yeah. This one more than the others, even though they've done it a little bit, it feels so much like it's setting up for a sequel. Like, oh my god. And I know yes. like the first one had like Starscream's gone into space. What's gonna happen next? <laughs> 
but it really feels like don't even worry about it because you thought you were going to get Unicron and you're an idiot for thinking that. That's but, right. But next movie, you won't be an idiot for buying a ticket that time probably. Mm, that's yeah. right. You thought Quintessa was gone for good, but she's back and she's a babe. Am I right? <laughs> you Fellas? are right. Yeah. Mm-mm. Gemma Chan, she's good. I like her. Yep. I forgot she was in this. Hate it. You got the touch. You got the power. You want to get punched in the face if you really want? Oh, what? Yeah! Now crack your head open like an egg. You English lady, shut it. Your car? Oh. After all is said and hey, done. Hey, heads. You never oh. you never I told you to go back there anymore. You're a winner. You got to move. I'm an inventor. This could be a game changer for me. If I can apply that technology to my inventions, you never have to worry about money. Look at this little fake horse. Probably stuffed in its butt or something. Stay in shut up. It's a freaking spaceship. You go get insurance on a freaking spaceship. Good luck with that, buddy. God, get out of the way, man. You ready? You're gonna bitch out on me. What? You got to touch. It's not as weird as some of the previous ones, in yep. particular number four. Mm. But I, I hate it. I hate it. It's bad. It's one of it's one of the worst. Yeah. I mean, again, it's tough to gauge these. They're all kind of they're all one of the worst, aren't they? <laughs> and a lot of people have asked also, are you going to come back and do Bumblebee? Not next week. It's a different continuity. Yeah. We will we will do it at some point. We'll probably pair that with like the the original animated movie and maybe some Beast Wars stuff. But and the reason is because it's good. It's, yeah. It's what the first one should have been. Yeah, I definitely. Feel. And again, ah, uh, look, if if you really want to know our thoughts on it, we did an episode of our podcast, The Weekly Planet, That's about right. it. Some time ago, when it came out, it's nice to know which Transformers are which in it. It certainly it's is. It's pretty cool. And next week, though, we will be coming back. Because leading up to Tenet, or Tenant, Tenetes, mm-hmm. we're going to do some Christopher Nolan classics, aren't we? That's right, we are. Which ones? What are we going to start with? Are we going to start with The Prestige? Yeah, probably, I get. Yeah, maybe. Oh, God, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh. Subscribe if you do want to see that. These come out every Tuesday. And these videos here all the time, isn't there? Yeah. Too many. But if you do want these early, you can actually go to Big sandwich.co sign up bonus podcasts audio commentaries early videos what else do you want what else do you want just fistfuls of cash we'll do it we'll do it sign up nine bucks a month we'll give you more of that in just physical money (laughs) deliver it to your house that's it but thank you for sticking uh with us through these People loved him. People have enjoyed this trip down memory lane. And look, we bitch and we whinge and we moan. Like a real Mark Wahlberg. That's right. But End of sentence. <laughs> oh, there's more? Okay. Yeah. But people watch these and mm. they enjoy them and they say nice things and we really appreciate having an audience to do and this. And you know what? Because may- we, we'd be doing this anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With nobody listening. That's exactly right. And you know what? At the end of the day, they may not be the most intelligently written movies They may not be the cleverest movies. They may not be the most fun movies. Anyway, that is the end of that sentence. (laughs) That's all I have. So thanks for your support, guys. See you next time. Grab that jab, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.